The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session of your online learning program. I am Nayem Dileju, your history teacher from four. Before we separate the last time, we had some work to do as an assignment. And we were asked to state and explain four contributions of Cameroonians during the Second World War. State and explain four contributions of Cameroonians during the Second World War. As a reminder, we should know that Cameroonians participated in the Second World War on the side of the Allied forces. And the Allied forces were represented in Cameroon by Britain and France. During the war, Cameroonians fought as soldiers. You know, Cameroon was divided into British Cameroon and French Cameroon. The British Cameroonians fought on the side of Britain, while French Cameroonians fought on the side of France. We 3,500 British Cameroonians were mobilized to enlist in the Royal West African Frontier Forces to fight for the British. While in French Cameroon, many French Cameroonians fought with the Free French Forces movement on the side of the French. Besides that, they were equally employed as porters and carriers. These porters and carriers that were employed from Cameroon were taken to Asia and they they assisted the Allied powers to transport war equipment and um, food and ammunition in areas that were less accessible, since those who were really involved in the fighting could not carry things at the same time during the fighting. Besides doing working like potters, they equally contributed raw materials to the Allied forces. They contributed raw materials like palm oil, which was used to fabricate lubricants that were used for war missionaries. And then they equally contributed raw oil, the, uh, they equally contributed rubber that the Allied powers used to fabricate war weapons and equally other gadgets of war like boots that the fighters were to use. They provided financial support to the Allied forces. If you look at what the British Cameroonians did, they mobilized themselves and founded an association that was called Win the World Fund. Through this association, the British Cameroonians contributed the sum of 1,000 pounds and sent it to Britain to be used for the war. And in French Cameroon, the Bafa Agricultural Cooperative contributed the sum of 15,000 francs and gave it to the French War Fund. This, when, as this war was going on, it was because they realized that the promises that were made after the First World War that ended, that they put in place the League of Nations to take care of international affairs, they saw that the work of the League of Nations did not work because the League of Nations was put in place to prevent any other conflict, any other international conflict. Since it did not work, we realized that the Second World War broke out. Now, this Second World War broke out. The Cameroonians helped in the way they helped, and then the war ended. Now, when the war ended, the war could not just stay like that. They decided to put in place another international community, which was known as the United Nations Organization. And this United Nations Organization had to put in place 
a, a body that was to take care of the affairs that were being taken care of by the mandate system. And so that is why they brought in place the trusteeship system. And this trusteeship system, that is why, why we are looking at it, our lesson today, which is the trusteeship agreement. <laughs> To go through this lesson, we are going to start with objectives, to start with look at the previous knowledge, situation in real life, lesson activities, summary, application, lesson, application exercises, and then we'll end up with assignment that you'll do for the next class. What I expect from you is that at the end of this lesson, by the time we end this lesson, you, the learners, should define the trusteeship council, describe how Cameroon became the trust territory, outline the terms of the trusteeship agreement. You are expected to define the trusteeship council, describe how Cameroon became a trust territory, and you outline the terms of the trusteeship agreement. Evidently, you know that Cameroon was a mandate territory that was placed under Britain and France. And that is why we know that one of the reasons why Cameroon fought in the war was because Cameroon wanted to help its colonial masters, which were France for French Cameroon and Britain for British Cameroon. Now, look around. In your neighborhood, a parent handed a son to a brother, who evidently is the uncle to that son, to help in his education. This brother, or the uncle of that son, exploited the boy as a cleaner in his house, but did not educate the child. What will you advise people in your community concerning this? These are some actions you can take. You denounce all forms of exploitation. You report all forms of human rights abuse to the competent authorities. And then you should equally advise them to train their children to be self-reliant. Their children should be self-dependent without counting that there is anybody that can help them. Now, to go through our lesson, which is the trusteeship agreement, we which are divided in these three parts. We we'll look at the trusteeship council, we we'll look at how Cameroon became a trust territory, and then we end up by looking at the terms of the trusteeship agreement. Start with the trusteeship council. How did it come about, its establishment? Now, we said it, all of us, that the mandate system had failed, or the League of Nations had failed in its mission. So the Second World War broke out in 1939. Now, since this war broke out, it was a challenge to the international community. So this war, the war was, was fought. It was extended to Africa, to Cameroon particularly. And then the, this war ended in 1945. With the end of this war, the international community could not just leave the, the world like that without anybody or without any organization that will take care of world affairs. And so they did not want again to continue with the new formation because they saw that it had failed. So they decided to put in place another international community or international body known as the United Nations Organization that was to take care of world issues. Now, this international body, the United Nations Organization, in its chapter eight, put in place the Trusteeship Council, which is an organ, or which was an organ of the United Nations, whose purpose was to supervise the evolution of the economic, political, and social, social and educational life of the territories that were to be put under this council so that they can grow towards self-determination or independence. Now let's look at the map. Let's look at this document. This document, we have 
has some numbers. You have some portions of the document. There is one of the portions that is labeled eight, six over seven, another one that is labeled eight point nine, and then we have another one labeled ten. There is one labeled eleven. Then we equally have twelve. We have six on seven, eight on nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We observe this document and answer the questions that follow. First question What is the nature of the document? Second question Identify and name the countries labeled six on seven. 8 or 9 and 11. What was their status after World War I? Which countries ruled Cameroon? Let us go back at the, to the document so that we we'll answer the questions. Now, the portion level 6 or 7 is Togoland. The one labeled eight or nine is Cameroon. The one labeled eleven is Tanganyika. Now we we'll go to our second question. We have said the document is a map, and then our second question we have answered the portion level six on seven is Togoland, eight or nine is Cameroon, and eleven of course is Tanganyika. What was their status after the First World War? They were mandated territories of the League of Nations. Which countries ruled Cameroon? Cameroon was ruled by Britain and France. Now, we said Cameroon was ruled by Britain and France, and the war ended. The United Nations organization was put in place to take care of trust territories. Now I want to see how Cameroon became a trust territory. So we are saying that following the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, it was realized that the League of Nations has failed. So it collapsed. With it collapsed, the world could not stay like that. Now the international community decided to put in place the United Nations Organization which was another body that was going to replace the League of Nations to take care of international affairs. So this United Nations organization put the, established the Trusteeship Council, which was a body that was going to take care of those man former mandated territories, which were not yet at their independent stage. So they, had, they wanted an organ that would take care of them. So now those territories that were mandated territories, which had not yet gained their independence, they were transformed to the to, to be trust territories, to territories that they had to trust them to some powers, to some colonial powers. And so Cameroon, which was equally a mandated territory and it had not yet achieved independence, it was transformed to a which was not yet a mandated territory, which was not yet independent as a mandated territory, was now transformed to a trust territory. So that is how Cameroon became a trust territory. It was a mandated territory under the League of Nations. The United Nations Organization replaced the League of Nations. The trusteeship system replaced the, League, the, the mandate system. And then the trusteeship council was there to supervise trust, supervise trust territories and then these trust territories were the territories that were, were mandated territories. So they were changed from mandated territories to trust territories. Cameroon automatically, which was a mandated territory, became a trust territory. Now, the trust T-ship system was put in place. There was an agreement. We want to look at the terms of the agreement. Because an agreement is normally an understanding between either two persons or three persons. We want to see. Now let us observe this document. 
this document, we have some personalities seated. We have four of them. One is labeled A. The next person seated to him is labeled B. Is labeled C, B, and then the, the letters are not where they were supposed to be. This is the personality labeled C, and then this is personality D. We have personality A, personality B, personality C, and personality D. Now we observe the document and then we we'll answer the questions that follow. What is the nature of the document? Who are the personalities labeled A and B? What is personality C handing to them? Who is the personality labeled D? The answers I had you compare with your own to see if they are the same answers. The document is a photograph, the invoice of the trusteeship council. Those, those two people seated, the personality A and personality B are invoice of, trust, of the trusteeship council. And the word personality C is handing to them. We can consider it that it is a complaint, it is a petition, or it is a report. It is a document that is handing to them. Then the personality D is an administering authority. Now we look at the terms of the trusteeship council. First of all, what is it? The trusteeship council was an understanding that was reached at between the trusteeship council and administering authorities, which were some colonial countries, to whom the trust territories were handed. So the, the trusteeship agreement was an, agreed, an, an understanding between the trusteeship council and those administrative administering authorities on how they are supposed to pilot the affairs, the economic, political, social, and educational affairs of the trust territories in order to guide them towards independence and self-determination. The terms that they had, one of the one of the terms that they had in the agreement was that the trust the trusteeship council was to receive annually reports from the administering authorities on how the, the activities of the trust territories are evolving, how they are carrying out their activities in the trust territories in order to prepare them towards independence. And they equally agree that the administering authorities were to respect the native laws and customs of their trust territories. They were to allow them to practice their customs the way they had been practiced since they were trying to prepare them towards independence. And now they saw that there were certain things which were particular of them that they were not supposed to be white. So they said they should respect their native laws and customs. And that the administered people who were people of the trust territories should be given the freedom of conscience. They should be allowed to decide on what their conscience tell them. They should be allowed to decide on how where to worship or how to worship. And then they should equally be given the right to, to, to express themselves, to say anything that might be is not going to them. Equally, there was this administrative arrangement that was agreed between the administering authorities and the trusteeship council. It was agreed that Britain could administer British Cameroon as part and integral part of Nigeria, while France could administer French Cameroon as part of French Equatorial Africa to ease the administration. And then they were equal, they equally engaged, the administrative authorities engaged that they were going to ensure the political, economic, social, and educational development of the trust territories in order to better guide them towards independence. And then it was equally agreed that the trusteeship council had the right to send an envoys to come and follow up, to come and control the way the administering authorities were piloting the activities or in the trust territories. That is why we had that document we, we saw before we arrived at this level. That's why we had that document, because in that document, we would 
will list it up. Those two personalities, A and B, were envoys that were sent by the trusteeship council to come and follow up what has been happening. And evidently, the, the personality C was handing a report or maybe a petition to them to report what was happening. Now, we realized that. We realized that the, the First World War broke out in 1939 and ended in 1945. With the with this First World War, with this second excuse me, the Second World War broke out in 1939 and ended in 1945. So with the advent of this war, it was realized that the missions of the League of Nations were not realized. So the United Nations organization was put in place to replace the failed League of Nations in 1945. And uh, in its chapter eight, in chapter eight of its charter, the UN established the trusteeship council to take care of the activities of the trust territories in order to supervise their evolution towards independence and self-determination. These the mandated territories that were formerly under the League of Nations were automatically changed as trust territories and trusted to the to these administering authorities. And uh, to successfully perform its role, the trusteeship council went into an agreement with the administering authorities. And by this agreement, it was agreed that the I mean, the trusteeship council will supervise the activities of the administering authorities in the trust territories. Now that Cameroon was a trust territory under Britain and France, it evidently was subjected to this agreement. We have gone through our lesson. Now we want to see how far you have understood the lesson. We'll answer these questions to see how far the lesson has been learned. Question one, the organ that was created to supervise the development of trust territories of the UN was A, the trusteeship council, B, the trusteeship system, C, the trusteeship agreement, D, the trusteeship, the security council, excuse me. We have A, the trusteeship council, B, the trusteeship system, C, the trusteeship agreement, and D, the security council. Question two, the following were the terms of the trusteeship agreement, except one. A, the trusteeship powers were to protect the trust territories. B, the trusteeship council could send envoys to control the administering authorities. C, the administered people could practice their laws and custom. D, the administering authorities could decide on the people's way of worship. Go to a type question. One, state and explain, state and describe how Cameroon became a trust territory of the UN. Two, outline and explain the terms of the trusteeship agreement. Our answers for the MCQ, question one, is evidently the trusteeship council that was put in place to supervise the activities of the administering authorities. And uh, it was never agreed that the administering authorities could decide on the people's way of worship. So that was the third point there. For uh, the first essay type question, we are asked to say how Cameroon became a trust territory. As we said in our, our lesson, we said Cameroon formerly was a mandated territory under the League of Nations that was trusted, that was mandated to Britain and France. Now, the Second World War broke out in 1939, leading to the collapse of the League of Nations. With the collapse of the League of Nations, 
the United Nations organization was put in place in 1945. And in its chapter, in, 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 in its chapter, chapter eight, the UN established the trusteeship system that was to take care of the trust territory. And then following this establishment, all the or former mandated territories were changed to trust territories. And since Cameroon was a mandated territory, Cameroon evidently became a trust territory. Question two, that you should state and outline the terms of the trusteeship agreement. The first one that we had, we said in our lesson, we said the, there were terms that were agreed or there were certain points that were agreed upon between the trusteeship council and the administering authorities. And we explained in our lesson that the administering authorities were administrators that were sent by those countries to whom these trust territories were trusted. So these administering authorities, following the agreement that they went into with the trusteeship council, one of it was that the trust, the administering authorities were to give annual report to the trusteeship council on how their activities in the trust territories are evolving. They need to write and tell them how people are evolving towards independence, how their economic activities are evolving, how their political activities are evolving, how they are educating the people, and how the people are feeling and moving towards independence and self-determination. And then they equally agreed that the administering authorities will not continue ruling the trust territories the way they were ruled when they were mandated territories because they were just deciding everything for them and then imposing everything they wanted on them. And so this time around, it was decided that the, the administering authorities were to respect the native laws and customs of the trusted people or the administered people. They were to leave them to practice their traditions, their laws, and their customs since they were gradually moving them towards self-determination. And then it was equally agreed that they were to have freedom to, to express themselves, freedom of worship, and even freedom of religion. They were not to be imposed any particular religion. And then it was equally agreed that they, they could make the, that the, the British, the British, the British government or Britain, which was an administering power, could administer British Cameroon like part and integral part of Nigeria, while France could administer French Cameroon as part of French Equatorial Africa. French Equatorial Africa was French's territory that France had and it was close to Cameroon, and so they wanted to ease the administration. So they decided that they would take their own part of Cameroon and administer it like part of French Equatorial Africa. Now, to have gone through this lesson, we consulted documents like a history of the 20th century by Brian. We consulted effective modern history for colleges by Patty George. You know, we equally consulted history of Cameroon since 1800. We did not leave out internet sources. This is what you have to do, like your assignment for the next class. Before we come for the next class, you should carry out research and write down four African countries that assisted France during the Second World War. Carry out research and write down four African countries that assisted France during the Second World War. Our next lesson shall be on the Brazzaville Conference. See you in the next class.
Una tege ma jang ma tege ndom ma ne tambia niña ne njubia yen ngani bana ma tege mut ngani la kiri wa tege ndong esa kina bia jinki do ma ne tambia niña ne njubia yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike ma ne tambia niña ne njubia yen